Praise the Lord, brethren. Um, I want us to have just a very short discussion on one of the word of knowledge that God gave us yesterday night. When God was speaking to us, um, I will read out the word of knowledge now. Because when I got it from God, I actually got a bit weak. And um, it set me thinking seriously. Um, for the whole of yesterday night, after getting the information, I wasn't even really available to hear any new thing from God. Because it was, it, it was very serious. So I'm going to read that, that voice, a word of knowledge and that. Uh, We'll have a little discussion over it. It says that, Daddy says, tell this word of knowledge to my people so that they can know how far they have gone from me and how their human-built institutions have stolen their hearts from me. If my coming was to take place this very night, the number of rapturable souls in one of their major world segregation, which they call denomination, are less than 10. They are not preparing for my return. They are like children turned dogs. Let them know. Not one point in my laws will be reduced to accommodate this rebellious generation. The standard is set and the standard is final. Let those who come to me ask for grace to fulfill all. To those who have ears, let them hear what the Spirit says. And that is the word of knowledge that God gave yesterday night. And truly speaking, when I, get, when I got that information, I just became weak. Um, I wasn't given what denomination, I wasn't given the country, where the denomination is. But in the word of knowledge, he spoke about a major world segregation. So um, it's not going to be, it's not a small organization that God is talking about. He's talking about a big organization. I don't know which one. But it is, it, it should, it's very painful to note that if Jesus comes that very night. A major organization has less than 10 that are prepared for rapture. Less than 10. And I don't think there is any major um, organization, religious body in Nigeria, that has less than maybe 30,000 members. So I, I, I want to look at a major place that has maybe even if just 10,000 members out of 10,000. Just less than 10. Talk less of when we are talking about the very big ones that have millions of members. What of if they are the one that God is speaking about and he says it's less than 10? And I, I was made to know by virtue of knowledge, when the word of knowledge came, that in that, uh, the, way, the way it came to me, when, the, when God was speaking about they are less than 10, he actually brought pictures, some sort of pictures to me, that this less than 10, they are actually like old women, old men and women, sort of. They are the ones. They are not even in the pastoral groups. They are not, it's not the general overseer or the leader or senior pastor or whatever the ministry is. I don't have that information about that ministry. But he, was, he picked one out of the major ones and said they are less than 10. And by the virtue of the persons I saw, they were black um, Africans. So it must be a black African church. And because I think we are based in Nigeria, I want to think that God must be speaking about Nigeria. But I, I am not 100% sure. But... What the people he showed me who are prepared for rapture, because he gave me a picture, and I'm just you know, it's just coming to me very clearly now. Uh, they are they are not the kind of persons that you, many of us here, we want to deal with. Honestly, they are not the kind of persons that we want to sit you down. You want to hear 
message from them. You know, you will think that you know more about Christ more than they are. They are the one that was shown to me. And I became scared. I became very scared. A few years ago, when God decided to show me my scorecard, I think like three, four years ago, three years ago or so, I saw the score. It was 54%. And as I then, we have started the Holy Spirit prayer house. And um, we started working for God. And I was still scoring 54%. And of course, now I understand why I score 54%. Because there are many things that I know today that I did not know then. So if, as I then, but our family leading prayer was scoring 54%, you know that 99% will not enter heaven. There is no grace for 1%. Nobody had extra grace. If a grace you cannot get on earth to be rapturable is a grace you can never get when you die. So, if and I, I told us again of another uh, preacher who temporarily I still he still says some things that I can find about Bablica. It's one of the very few that still says things that are Bablica. And he said he was taken into a lift, it's something like um, a, a, not not a lift, like one of those bank doors, those security doors. But the difference is that once you enter into that door. It will read your percentage and tell you what your percentage is. And that, you know, many of the men of God, the very popular ones that he knew, went into the lift and they were scoring less than 50%. Less than 50%. And um, when he himself entered, I think he scored like 50%. And he said it's only one person he knew that entered there and scored 75%. And that person is um, a preacher that is not well known. He knows the person, but the person is not well known. The person is not popular. The world does not know the person. The person is not celebrated. That person still scores 75%. So you see how difficult everyone is. I, I needed to um, add this note tonight because I was very bothered when I got that information and God is kind enough to speak to us and tell us that we are, we are lost a lot of us are lost we have become um, churchilized we are now serving the church we are now serving men of God we are following after, after people and no, I've always said it in this group that you don't, you can't follow me. It's not possible. <laughs> in our discipleship group, we say, follow Jesus as I follow Jesus. We are all following Jesus. And me, I will never tell you to follow me as I follow Jesus. It doesn't work that way. Don't follow me. Everybody should follow Jesus. And from that message that Jesus gave us, Jesus was saying that many of us are lost. We have, you no, know, we have, we are far from him. And um, our human built institutions have stolen us from Christ. So we are followers of institutions, not followers of Jesus. And we rather do things to please our institution than do it to please Jesus. And Jesus is complaining that that has made us far from him. And we are not preparing for rapture. We are preparing for our continuous churchilized meetings our we are trying to fulfill our church our ministry the people we represent our family rapture is very far from the mind of many of us and that is why jesus is telling us clearly that in a major denomination the people that are prepared for rapture and if he come and he will pick them, they are less than ten. This is this is heartbreaking. Honestly, this is this is this sobers anyone that has a thought. This sobers anyone that is really thinking of going to heaven. This sobers us and asks us to stop this um, jamborees that we call services and stop this. Uh, how will I call it? Idol worship 
that we call um, uh, religious or not. And all sort of things that we have converted Christianity to. Is, this is calling you out of the crowd. If you love your life. And you know, if you are... There, there are millions of Christians who doesn't even have the opportunity to listen to this kind of discussion. But God is granting you the grace to listen to this. This should make you sober. And this should make you reflect. Where do you stand? Is your name in the book of life? Jesus is stating here that not one of his conditions will be reduced for our rebellious generation. And you know, he calls us a rebellious generation. And I understand. Honestly, I understand. I could I I wouldn't have used such words, but it's coming from him. He called this generation a rebellious generation. So many of us, we feel oh, this our generation of Christianity because we now have crowd and big auditoriums and you no know, celebrity pastors and leaders that we are we are moving for Christ. But the, the one we say we are working for calls us a, a rebellious generation. I, can I beg of you? Can I can I beg? That you take time out to go back to God and you have a personal discussion with God Almighty. Can I beg of you that we take time out to stay with God and really examine our life? What is sharing you with God? What, is, what has become a second God in your life that can debar you? For making rapture. What has made you unrapturable? What is it that is so big that you cannot drop for Jesus? That you cannot let go at the feet of Jesus and say, I am adding this to my sacrifice. What is it? What is it? I, I, I know where, where I thought of immediately was that for every major denomination in Nigeria, we have more than 10 of their members in our group. For every major denomination, we have more than 10 members each inside the Holy Spirit prayer house. So the question I was asking myself is, this is our prayer group that we have even gathered together to God. Do we have people that are ready for rapture there? Or are they just listening to the messages and saying, well, <laughs> but family has come again, you know. He's always, uh, he's always complaining and talking, talking, talking. Uh, we'll wait till the day that he's prophesying and we'll say amen. <laughs> or we'll wait for the day we, you know, the day we'll do, we'll do healing service and we'll do special uh, Holy Ghost services and uh, hey, Holy Spirit revival. Mm-hmm, then we'll all uh, join. But ah, uh, we'll just sample the message. Is he complaining again about holiness again? <laughs> Oh, no, let's leave that one. Let's, leave that one. let's wait until when he start talking the one we want to hear. If you are in that shoes, ha, I feel so sorry. I feel so sorry, honestly. Because, like, I, like I've said before in one of our messages, and I repeat it again, those things you are chasing after, that is making you not to obey the scriptures, you will hate them when you die. Honestly, is it marriage that is making you not to obey Christ? You will wish you never got married on the day you are facing with the fire himself. God sitting at the seat of judgment. You know, Jesus came like a lamb. The next time we are meeting him, he's coming as, a, as, a, as, as, as the fire. He's coming to judge. Your works will be sent through fire. All the works you've done for God will be sent through fire. It will be burnt. Only the one that is golden will stand. By then, you will not be able to explain to God the reason why you joined the choir just because you like their uniform. That day, you won't be able to explain to God why you were collecting the money you were never asked to collect. As a minister of God, that day you will explain to God what you were, what you were doing. When you were sitting as if you are the assistant God in that ministry. 
on that day you will explain to God why you saw what he wrote and you decide to do the opposite because you have you know somebody gave you one funny excuse for it. I say eh, we have excuse, God understands. On that day you will wish that you have let go everything in order to serve God. You will wish that you have submitted everything for him. Honestly, on that day, sisters will, will be will be wishing. That every cover they have had in their in their life, they've used it for better things than the fashion they are chasing up and down. Brothers that are having side chicks and no uh, doing all that kind of funny funny thing, you will wish that you have never met those sisters. You've never seen them before in your life. For ministers that are that are padding the books and know all the funny things, you will wish you were never a pastor. For those of us that are pastors. And you stand on the altar, you are teaching fine, fine messages. This is you to preach the truth. You know, you are doing, uh, you are doing a grammatical expression on the altar of God. Ah, it is okay in, in UK. You will not shine in China. Uh, you will not US in the USA. And everybody is clapping for you. And when you pick another one, you are saying, ah, the Lord of the Lord of uh, Jim Jim, and you're not Jim Jim, and you say, wow, everybody's jumping and say, that man of God. Uh, on that day, you will wish that you have sat down with the people and you have taught them the Bible. We're the one joking with the rapture. Satan is not joking with it. Heaven is not joking with it. I was expecting that many of our services and everywhere, what we just keep talking about is holiness, how to get it right with God, how to reconcile back with God, and, and how to make it to heaven. Brethren, on that day, ha, and it, well, is it Brother Paul or Brother Peter? One of them called it the terrible day. On that terrible day when you will have to give account of every word that you spoke from your mouth, every action. Every money that comes to your hand, how you spent it, your flesh, your body, your spouse, your children, everything you will have to give account on that day. It's a terrible day. That should be the day we are preparing for. That should be the day that is behind our all our actions. That is the day we should all focus on. If God can speak to us clearly and tell us that if he came yesterday in a major denomination, and I know the denomination you're talking about will be over a, a million members, only 10. And when he showed me the kind of people that are prepared, brethren, they are not the kind of persons that you will allow them to sit you down and say, let me teach you how to prepare for rapture. What I saw, they are not the kind of persons. And it's, it's, it's giving me, it's making me to very careful and begin to look at things Deeper now. To look at it according to the instructions of Jesus. Brethren, Jesus said, not one point will be removed because of our rebellious generation. So, everything Jesus says in the Bible, <laughs> if we are not obeying it, then I would just advise, if you are not ready to 100% obey Jesus, please, go to the world. Leave this Christian race. Don't sacrifice anything. Enjoy yourself because you know that, okay, we have enjoyed here. We die and go to hell. Honestly. If you are not willing to surrender everything for the purpose of God, if you are not ready to give your life in the entirety to Christ, if you are not ready to obey every instruction that comes from God, from God then please, don't bother. Don't waste your time going to church. Go to the world. You are a man. Have a hundred girlfriends. You are a woman. Get as many as possible. Enjoy. Drink. Smoke. Take uh, Indian help. Do everything. Enjoy for the next uh, 50, 70 years or whatever is left for you. Because that's the last. And after that, you know that, yes, empire is straight. But it is it, it makes no sense to sacrifice in the name of I'm a Christian and still you do not obey full instructions. It is still hell. <laughs> so you have to choose one. 
I want to go to hell or I want to go to heaven. I want to go to hell. I disobey the instructions of Jesus. I pick the one I like. I would just advise, disobey everything and you know. <laughs> but if you are coming to Christianity, there is no half measure. There is no, I'm going to grow into it. If Jesus came yesterday night, you are saying you want to grow into it. Does he help you? By now, as many of us that are not ready, we are, ready, we are, we are done for already. If he came yesterday night, we are done for. Or if any of us had died yesterday, because 150,000 people on the average dies every day. If God has included one of us and the, and the person is gone, the person will be in hell now. And yet the person was paying tight. The person was paying offering. The person was going to church. Was waking up early morning to run to work house meeting. Was crying microphone and preaching. Was singing in church. Was an usher. Was, went for a crusade. And you know, did sacrificial giving. Did everything and still go to hell. So what's the purpose? What's the purpose? <laughs> what's the purpose? The Bible says there's no repentance after death. There's no grace after death. The grace available for you today is for you to become perfect right now. There's no I'm working on it. I'm still working on it. What's the meaning of that? We need to get ourselves ready for rapture. Any one of us can drop dead. Oh, I was telling somebody. He was telling me about uh, praying for long life. I looked at him. Which long life are you praying for? <laughs> Why do you waste your time praying for a long life? If God says you are dying today, you die. No matter how much you pray. If God says you are not said going to die, and you are in the will of God, Satan will try best. He can't even kill you, because he can't tap out with God's property. It is when you are out of the will of God, you are praying against death. So any of us can go. One year old dies, six years old dies, ten years old dies, twenty years old dies, forty dies, fifty dies, seventy dies, eighty dies. So... Shouldn't we begin to just obey Jesus on their person? Shouldn't we decide that I want to become a disciple of Jesus? Because death, there is nobody that was here 100 years ago that is still here. Or 150 or 200 years ago, where are they? They're all gone. The things they were chasing after, where are they? They've rotted away. The body they were wasting their time and energy on, where is it? It's gone. The house and the cars and the things they were running up under, the marriage they said they want to die because of. And because of that marriage, I will not serve God. Because I want husband, I will not obey him. Where is it all? It's gone. And are we going to follow their footsteps again? Those ones that died 200 years ago that did not meet the 100% criteria of Jesus, where are they today? They are in hell. And they are still there. And they will be there forever. Why are we following after their footsteps? <laughs> but then, God is calling us to Himself. Of course, it, will, it, it, it could send you to a denomination, it could send you to a group, it could send you to a place. But that place is not your savior. <laughs> the guild of Asia or the senior pastor or the archbishop or the whatever names, it's not your savior. He didn't die for you. So he can't tell you this is how to do Christianity. No, Jesus is the one that told us how to do Christianity. Jesus is our final instruction. We all need to go back to Jesus and prepare for rapture. I just wanted to leave this note. It was supposed to be short, but it's now 24 minutes, so I don't think it's short again. But just to charge us and set us thinking, are you prepared for rapture? Are you prepared for the blast of the trumpet? Are you prepared for when you will not be able to lift a finger again? This body to which you have decided to, 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 to give everything to, the body you have decided to please, one day is coming when you will not be able to lift a finger. And that day you will be going to meet Jesus, who is word you have been carrying up and down all this while. There's almost none of us now who uses a smartphone that does not have a Bible there. The instructions of Jesus are written there. Clearly. Have you started following them? But then it is time to prepare for rapture. I pray for you. You will not miss rapture. 
and the day we will all be called that death will come knocking. The day our time will expire on the face of this earth. May we be heaven worthy in Jesus' name. I want to finish it up here. Bird is the way that leads to destruction. And many be they that walk therein. Matthew chapter 7. Narrow and straight is the gate that leads to eternal life. And few be them that find it. I was telling somebody this week that when I begin to do something for Christ, and everybody is doing it also, I begin to check myself. Am I right? Because look as if the crowd is now doing this. This is where the crowd is going. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Because Jesus cannot lie. And Jesus' words cannot change. He said the multitude will walk in the way of destruction. Only few will find a way to eternal life. Please, it is time to come out of the crowd and join the very few that will find a way to eternal life. God bless you. You can go into your prayers now.